There's a lot of craft brewers out there who like beer. I'm not a beer drinker. I do like gin. If you're going to make a product, make something you can drink yourself. He's hoping the Dragons will share his penchant for his tipple and get a taste for investment. Hello Dragons, my name is Stuart Ingram. I'm here today to offer you the opportunity to invest in the brand House of Elric. The opportunity I'm offering you today is the House of Elric Spirits range for an offering of £80,000 in exchange for a 6% equity stake. House of Elric is a brand built around my own home, which is Elric House, the small estate in Aberdeenshire, and dates back to the 1720s. It's got a rich history and heritage with strong links to Bonnie Prince Charlie and has been in my own family for the last 70 years. It happened to come in the market three and a half years ago and I decided to purchase the premises. It was at this point I decided I wanted to try and create a destination venue. And part of that was building a restaurant and gin distillery. Which brings me on to my first product under the brand, which is a gin. 12 months ago, whilst waiting for the planning applications to go through, I thought, why wait? Let's test the market. So based on the links that we have with Pony Prince Charlie, we built a product around the Jacobite Rose based on Mediterranean citrus and juniper with an additive of heather. And this is the only spirit to use Loch Ness as a water compound. We launched six months ago. And in that period, I've sold 2,800 bottles, turning over 85,000 pounds. Thank you for listening. Would you like to join us for a drink? Definitely. I've got two different samples here. A gin tapping into its Scottish heritage is the proposition from Stuart Ingram. So the small one is the straight gin, tall one gin and tonic. He's seeking £80,000 in return for a 6% share of his company. Breathing fire now. <laughs> First to see if the business is a real tonic is Peter Jones. Stuart, I do love sitting in this chair sometimes. Almost every pitch should start like this, shouldn't yeah. it? Yeah. Regardless well, yeah, it of does what help. they're selling. Um, Stuart, nice backstory, actually. Thank you. The property, is that the property there? Yeah, so that's, that's Elric House. And the business that you're coming in for investment and you're pitching, you're not pitching the house, are no, you? No, no. This, this the is the spirits business. The spirits business, yes. which has been going for six months. Yep. So let's talk about that then. So it's a big start, 2,800 bottles, quite a lot. Six months, yep. What's the price? Of one of these? Retail's 38.50. And where does that compare to Hendrix and, the, and others? I'm at the higher end. I'm probably more premium, but then there are other gins that are over the £40. What does it cost to make? I'm making it, without duty, just over £8 a bottle. And then I, I have to build in £8.44 of duty. So it costs you 16.44 Effectively, per bottle, yeah. And what's the forecast for this year? So this year I'm targeting 8,000 bottles for year one, and that would give me £250,000 turnover. And that would generate gross 122, net profit 89,000. I'll tell you what, it's really nice. It's a beautiful gin. So far, so good. A steward's drink and his figures go down a treat with Peter Jones. And there's more praise on its way from Deborah Meaden, who's impressed with the way Stuart has packaged his product. It looks different. And in a world where there is so much gin, how memorable it is can make the difference. You've got the visual in the bottle, you've got the taste behind that, which is lovely. But um, 1.3 million pounds valuation. Okay. Um, it just looks quite racy at the moment. I've taken this product from nothing to the shelf within six months and I've been six months down the line and seen that growth generate and the way that doors are opening at the moment. So give me numbers going forward. Year two, I'm projecting sales of 20,000 bottles. That'll generate 640 turnover. Year three, I'm looking at 40,000 bottles. That'll be the 1.28 million. That's great numbers. Yep. What's your plan? How are you gonna achieve these numbers in a really busy marketplace? because that's what it has to do to reach your valuation. Because it's creating the brand. So there's, I've got other products already lined up ready to go behind the brand. 
I'll have the restaurant house itself for wedding venues. So I've just created our own tartan for the house. And then there's the spirit business. Stuart, you're going to be pulled from all directions. Trying to get planning for the house, sorting out the restaurant. You might have a couple of hours on this during the week. I, I'm, I'm really, really worried. While Tuka Suleiman is concerned Stuart's biting off more than he can chew, Peter Jones is wondering whether those expansion plans could present a lucrative opportunity for an investor. Stuart, how much was the house? 650,000. So let's talk about that then. So this business is based around the house of Elric, a lovely backstory. Owning part of the house, why would you not come in and pitch that? Or well, are you willing to talk about that? I'm willing to talk about that, but I think if I, if I add that in, that's obviously an increase in what we need for investment. That makes much more sense to me if you're happy with that, because then you're in the house of Elric, it's the whole business. And where were you going to raise the extra money to build all this? I've no idea. don't know. That's why I'm just doing what I can afford now, because I've managed to do this one under my own salary so far. And what do you do? What's your day job? Contracts engineer, oil and gas industry. Has been for 17 years. And you do this at evenings and weekends? Evenings, weekends, lunch times. Stuart, I'm a gin and tonic fan. I have about 36 on my bar at home. So it's a massive vision, what you have, which I laud you for. You know, I kind of get all the pieces of the puzzle. Then on the other side of the coin, you know, it is, I'm thinking, crikey, how are you going to do all this as well as do your day job? Where's the flip point of you stop being your engineer and you put all of you Probably into... Probably the end of this year, I'd imagine. So getting this thing moving fast and generating the cash is the tipping point for you to Correct. then leave, leave your engineering job and focusing all your energies on this. Yes. You mentioned a restaurant. How big will this restaurant be and what sort of restaurant? I would like to target rosettes getting on to Michelin Star. We want to be sustainable fuel to fork restaurant using what's grown on the land in the restaurant. Restaurant business is hard as well. Mm. Extremely hard. A lot yeah. of hard yards ahead of you. A reality check from Jenny Campbell, who can see tough times on the horizon. Could Tej Lalvani be tempted to add the gin business to his portfolio? Let's do it. I like the taste. Um, I've not invested in any drinks companies as yet, so I was quite excited when you came with this product. And I saw the packaging, the presentation, and what you've achieved in, in six months. It's quite remarkable. And I think I'm hesitating a little bit because you're, you're not at that stage yet where you've built enough momentum. If we were a year down the line, two years down the line, and I could see a good month-on-month -month growth, but to take a risk at this stage with so little is going to be a challenge for me. So I wish you all the luck, but sadly I'm out. Tej Lalvani is the first dragon out, unwilling to back a startup without concrete signs of potential. And it looks like Deborah Meaden's come to a decision on whether to give the gin company a shot at success. For me, you've made a mistake. Okay. And it's not in the product. I would not be exaggerating if I said to you that in the last month, I probably had four gin companies asking me if I would get involved in their business. But I have got to tell you, not one of them has dared come up with a valuation of over a million pounds. For me, I haven't heard any indicator that it's going to make that leap from small craft gin to something that is going to be worth 1.3 million. I'm really sorry, but I'm out. You have done a good job, and you have got a dream. However, if you go into too many dreams at the same time, you might have a nightmare. And 
I'm concerned at the amount of time you'll put into it now while you still have to work. I'm not going to invest today and I'm out. The pitch is on the rocks as Tuka Suleiman becomes dragon number three to ditch the deal. But Peter Jones is still in play and it seems he's keen to shake things up a bit. The more I drink, the more interested I get. <laughs> but you pitch the House of Elric and you pitch the Bonnie Prince Charlie and it's all a good story. But then when you say, well, I've got a property of, which is 650,000, To me, it goes together as one. You were potentially willing to discuss that because you see the whole vision and the big package. So on that basis, I'm going to make it difficult and make you an offer. Okay. I'm going to offer you all of the money, 80,000, for 10%. But the 10% includes the property, it includes the business. Yeah, including the restaurant and everything. Yep. Well, as the restaurant is built out, yep. I'll also invest 10%, whatever the cost is of that. Yep. But okay. I'll own 10% of everything. OK. And that's my offer to you. An offer at last. But Peter Jones has upped the ante, looking for a 10% share of Stuart's complete brand. Will gin lover Jenny Campbell serve up a rival bid? I've been musing over how to do this. And is it part of the whole thing or is it just part of the gin journey? My strategy for this business would be to get you churning out these bottles as fast as possible. The other stuff doesn't happen until this is driving enough cash. So I think where my offer would be, Stuart, is for all of the money, for just the gin part of the business. But I would want 12% of your business. OK. Thank you for the offer. Take a minute, if that's all right. Shall I send you some gin over? It's a tricky decision, with two very different offers on the table. Jenny Campbell's £80,000 is for 12% of Stuart's gin company, while Peter Jones is seeking 10% of his brand from top to toe. OK, thank you for your time and your positive feedback. I have decided I think I'm going to accept Peter's offer. Wow. Wow. Well done. I thought he would. <laughs> Fantastic. Oh, well done. Nothing venture, nothing oh, well. gained. <laughs> awesome. Oh, so chuffed. Thank you. It's happy hour for Peter Jones and for the gin man, who never lost his bottle in the den. Congratulations, Peter. I need a stiff drink after that. <laughs> well, well done, Peter. Well, thank you. I'm, well done. You know, I'm over uh, the moon. I knew Peter was the guy for me. I think my business has potential to be one in a million. Having Peter on board, there's every likelihood that I could achieve that. <laughs>